Hey guys, we're back with a brand new freelance update. This is month four, which man, it feels like I just started this series a few weeks ago. But yeah, some pretty amazing news. I'm gonna tell you guys, you know, the updates on how much I've made, as well as kind of the stories and, you know, the different lessons that I've learned along the way. So first side of it, what you guys care about, and it's probably gonna be the title of the video, I crossed $20,000 and it took me about four months to get there. Now, crossing this total, this is just payments that I have accepted as of now, this doesn't include the total value of a contract, right? And on the upper side of it, 18,000. And then also on the other side coming from either the YouTube channel or the website, I kind of have these together right now as you scale, right? Maybe I want to split these apart, but I have 2000 on that side of things. And historically through the series, right? All the gigs that I've landed have been through Upwork, but I think also kind of making these YouTube videos showing how I've been able to scale freelancing has really helped with people reaching out um, from the YouTube channel, right? I always talk about taking on freelance customers in these type of videos, or at least I kind of started that the last six to 12 months. And, you know, last month I had four people that reached out on that side of things. Well, more than four, but I landed four deals uh, just from videos and different things like that, which is really, really awesome. Uh, a little bit of mixture of stuff, right? Some data analytics work with Looker dashboards, uh, some also kind of helping build out tutorials, and then also some NEN workflows. And I'll talk a little bit more about these type of projects as they move a little bit farther. And I've already learned some really awesome stuff to share in my NAN series. But yeah, so now I'm starting to get that additional income from that side of things. And ideally long-term, what I wanna be at is kind of like 50-50 or a little bit more like 60-70% of stuff that comes from YouTube rather than Upwork because you are liable on the Upwork side of things like Upwork could close down your account, right? It is a third-party platform. Or as if you build your own assets with a YouTube or a website, I think that's probably the better approach to go. And you guys can see, like, I typically upload two to three different YouTube videos every single week, which is a ton of work. And then also on the website side of things, I hired someone to build out a bunch of articles too, or take the YouTube videos and turn those into articles. So last month I invested heavily on getting a bunch of different Streamlit articles on the website because I found I did a pretty good job with Streamlit work on Upwork. Um, so I think there's anywhere from like 20 to 30 streamlit articles. There might be more here in the future, but uh, now I'm going to pivot and get a decent amount of any N uh, articles on there. And listen, I have a lot of SEO work to do. I understand that the articles can be better. Yes. Um, but it's just kind of a start, right? A framework. And these are things, again, I'll talk about a little bit more here on the channel. Hey guys. So I'm actually recording this after I just realized I forgot to bring this up. And you know, if I had my teleprompter already, this would probably help because I could script out this video, but uh, I just want to tell you guys, I really haven't been applying to jobs. So if I look over my proposals the last 30 days, I've sent three proposals, all boosted by the way, and I got two hires, which is an insane rate, but uh, they've gotten me some pretty big projects that I've been busy with on that side of things. So really haven't sent proposals. Invite wise, I had six invites this month, which I think was my most that I've had yet. Um, I've had two in the last seven days. And then just looking at profile views, right? I've had 16 profile views in the last seven days and across 30 days, I've had 59. And just, I'm curious, I'm gonna look at last 90 days. Last 90 days in general, I've had 127 views. And that's when I was applying, you know, two, three jobs a day, if not more for a while. So profile views are doing really well for not even really applying. Um, there's impressions and clicks, which I'm not too sure what that is. It only shows last seven days. There's a star next to it. Oh, for your boosted profile. Yeah, I don't have a boosted profile. So I was wondering why there was a star next to it. But either way, like I've, I haven't really been applying to stuff. I just want to share with those stats with you guys as well. And, you know, there's going to be periods where you're not going to apply for stuff if you get really busy, right? I know I need to get back and apply to jobs because obviously that's the way to get more customers. But, uh, you know, I, I'm really happy with the current customer base that I have. And when I get a little bit more bandwidth, I will jump back into that. In fact, I've skipped a few different YouTube videos because I've been so busy and I've actually missed a few different workouts and runs, which, you know, I need to do a little bit better job of prioritizing my time a little bit. You know, sometimes I'll get all my work done early in the week and then I have a little bit extra time here on the weekend. So, you know, I need to balance that out. I need to make sure every day they either get some type of exercise in, whether that's running or doing um, some calisthenics or weight lift. But uh, regardless on that side of things, I just want to throw this in here because that was kind of on my mind to talk about in this video. And, you know, it, it completely escaped me. I think kind of like the biggest takeaway that I've learned over this last month is kind of knowing your value on the side of things. And, 
you know, something me and Matt have talked about before here on the channel is, you know, you want to start off and get gigs to have, you know, experience on that side of things. And I did, right? When I first started Upwork, I took 30 to $40 an hour for jobs. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but over time you want to scale that, right? And kind of the last few gigs that I've taken on, I've been way more selective. Um, these have been gigs that people have either like reached out or I applied to. I want to say most of them I've re people have reached out on that side of things, but I'm going anywhere from $80 an hour to $100 an hour. And I've been staying busy on that side of things. Um, I do have one customer that I really like working with that is still at $50 an hour, which again, I'm not going to complain about that because $50 an hour, if you work that full time, that's over $100,000 a year. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to really get those customers anywhere from 80 to 100. And one thing I also see like people that talk about sales and things like that is they mentioned, you know, you want to continue to raise your rate until you see a lot of friction. And there really hasn't been any friction at the 80 to $100 rate. So, you know, I'm going to continue to increase it and see, you know, where do people stop and just kind of learn from there. Now, investment wise, you know, what am I doing with the money that I've made so far? So a few things, right? Uh, last video, I talked about improvements with the audio quality and, and also the lighting setup, which I hope you guys are liking. I've also recently ordered a teleprompter so that way I can kind of script the videos a little bit better. In addition, I have taken on a customer where they want me to make some videos based around coding, which I think that will help a ton on that side of things. I've already talked about also website investments, so I'm trying to build out some content on that side of things. And then with the rest of the money, what I'm going to end up doing, I'll put some of the money into my Roth which I highly recommend that you guys build out a Roth uh, at some point, right? Because it is essentially tax-free, the gains on that side of things. In addition to that, right, I'm kind of in the initial stages of talk uh, about purchasing into a business. So we'll see if that ends up going through or not. We won't really find out until October, maybe November, um, but happily we'll put this in the video if that does end up happening, right? I would be in charge of the data work on that business and there's other things that I can do to kind of grow it out. I've learned a lot of kind of like business operations and some of the analytics that stakeholders want to learn about is specifically taking on these freelance jobs. And, you know, I work kind of in a silo domain with risk and underwriting, and I learned a ton about, you know, what is considered like a risky merchant or what we need to do in terms of like refunds and chargebacks. And I know a lot about that domain, but I know one of the things that I kind of miss in my current job is I don't really get to work with CEOs that often are COOs, right? Well, I don't at my company. Um, but one of the freelancing side of things, you get to work sometimes with the people that, you know, have started the company from scratch and built it up. And also the people that are in the operations that know all the different departments in the company. So it's kind of cool to see those insights, you know, from the leaders on the side of things. I'm learning a ton on that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the updates for month four. I know this really isn't, a longer video. Uh, I'm sure I'll have some more insights on that side of things. Also, we're going to be doing a Q&A for September here on the channel. A few people have reached out already on Discord for questions. I know also on YouTube. So we'll be answering those, whether it's like on freelancing or data or any N or anything like that. So if you do have any questions, make sure to take a look at the community section over here and, and leave a response on that side of things. But I do hope you guys enjoy these videos. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to follow along with the journey. And if you do like data, right, we have hundreds of videos and we're going to keep pushing them out. All right. See you guys.